You're watching Devil and Divorce. I'm your host, Karen Turk, with attorney Joe Costello, my co-host. And we're here today with Robert, who's got another interesting divorce story, another alimony story. Yes. Somebody who's kind of feels like he got taken advantage of the system. Absolutely. Tell us your story, Rob. Uh, well, I was in a marriage for 17 years, uh, at which point it kind of was made clear that this wasn't going to last and uh, decided to get divorced, went through a collaborative divorce process where it was supposed to be a big kumbaya fest mm -hmm. where everybody gets together and comes up with an amicable solution. And you thought you were going to get that. You went into this optimistic. Absolutely. And that, that collaborative divorce process is a relatively newer process that a lot of people are going towards in the effort to minimizing the cost of the litigation and getting a certain result before things go crazy. But unfortunately, that doesn't sound like th that's the way it worked out for you. No, it, it didn't. Um, I, I was, in the end, kind of convinced that her attorney on her side just told her to hang on for a lifetime, that she'll get it. How long of a marriage was this, Rob? Uh, well, by the time it finally ended, a month and a week short of 20 years. Uh, but when did the divorce process start? 17, just after the 17th year. Just after the start and of the 17th year. And isn't 17 years the exact time that you get lifetime alimony? Well, I find a, that <laughs> ironic. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it is, uh, based on the law, it's the very beginning of what's called a long-term marriage. And that's when mm -hmm. courts are gonna really start thinking about uh, that dreaded permanent alimony uh, obligation. Well, uh, I, I choose to think that it wasn't premeditated. It just makes it easier for me. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, it Especially is Especially the it is. collaborative divorce situation. See, when you hear that word, and that's like a new buzzword, you know, you hear that word and you think, okay, so this is going to be something that's going to be kind of amicable. And it wasn't in your case at all. No, it wasn't. Listen, my, my folks divorced when I was three. And at my dad's 65th birthday, he introduced my mom as his first wife and one of his best friends. And that's so it should be. what I was hoping, mm -hmm. you know, we would have in the end. Because uh, we did have, we do have two kids together, and you know, there's always going to be graduations and births of a child, weddings, and you know, it would be nice to always be able to be included. But you, you know. can't do that now. No. And by the time you're 65, you told me an interesting statistic, which yeah, I by, thought was by great. By the time I'm 65, I'll pay in more years of alimony than I was married. Now, Rob, was this was this a resolution by way of agreement or was this something that a judge ordered this permanent alimony? No, so when uh, we were in the collaborative process and um, that went on, it just dragged and dragged and dragged. What do you believe to be the reason for the drag, to use your words? Well, because she didn't want to settle. She wanted permanent alimony and I didn't want to give her permanent alimony. You know, when we met, she was working three jobs you know, she's not a stupid person, she's capable. You know, for her to go out and get a job and take care of herself, you know, isn't unreasonable. Um, I, I don't want people to think I'm opposed to alimony. Alimony has a place, but it shouldn't be a lottery ticket for the rest of your life. It should be alimony with limits and within reason and not paying longer than you were actually married. Absolutely. There are all these other crazy things that we hear here around the show. Yeah, it depends on when you get divorced, at what stage of your life. If you get divorced relatively young, yeah, that if there is a permanent alimony award, then it can stretch on for a number of years. Certainly if you get divorced or married later in life, it's gonna be a different story because there's a finite amount of time and. There's a reasonable expectation of retirement. There's going to be a change in income at some point in time. And the law does allow for modification under certain circumstances, but it is somewhat of a nebulous concept. For the layperson, it can be a little daunting to, to stare down that barrel. Well, it, and it is. And, but the reality in the end is even though I'm divorced, I'm still tied to her till death do we part. And that's yeah. the, and, and for better or worse, that's the case whether it's an alimony obligation or in your, in your situation when there's minor children involved. Mm -hmm. There's going to be that tie together no matter what when there's children involved. And un unfortunately, alimony, you know, I always joke that the only thing people hate paying worse than alimony is the other side's legal fees. And that's always something that kind of pushes parties to settle, whether it's at a mediation or outside of a mediation when people are trying to work out their differences, th differences themselves as opposed to leaving it to a stranger in a black robe right. who's never really met you before and is not going to think about you five minutes after you leave. Well, see, with child support, everything is structured. You have this income, you have this income, this is your child support obligation. Great, it's easy. You, you go in knowing basically what you're gonna have. You know, in the alimony business, or the divorce business, there is no guidelines. 
There, there's no real rules that anybody follows. It's so hard to believe, and I know we've heard mm -hmm. that before, but it's just like so, it's hard to fathom as a layperson. Well, there's no, no two families are the same, no two situations are the same. There may be similarities, but they're not the same. Well, and I, 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 there should be some discretion available to the courts, but there should still be some hard, fast guidelines. You know, if you've got two able-bodied working people, one of them shouldn't be on the hook for the rest of their life. Well, and I mean, I, I get the whole transitional thing. Like, I understand, okay, you stay home, you have kids, you change your life for a person, you know, you're in a marriage, you have one person who's working and one person who's home with the kids. Like, I can see there being a transition of time where she's got to figure out how to get back into the workforce and all these things. But to have that for the rest of your life, to have uh, alimony that's longer than the length of the marriage, that just sounds so unreasonable. Right, and, and the counter argument to that, Robin, I, I'm sure you know this from experience now, having gone through this, the counter argument is, well, hey, the law allows me to modify at some point in time, unless I agree otherwise. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that modification is going to cost you time, it's going to cost you money, and you're going to get an uncertain result because if the other party doesn't agree, guess what? You're going through divorce 2.0, and now you're dealing with somebody you don't necessarily have that emotional tie to anymore, like in the original divorce. Sheesh. And don't you have to have like a material change in circumstances in order to do that well, as well? There is. So Absolutely. the law says substantial, material, unanticipated, involuntary change in circumstance. Now, if you ask the three of us what that means, you're going to get three wildly different answers. Sounds like a lot. It sounds like a. It, it sounds is. like you need to like prove a lot to get a modification. It That's is. what it sounds like to me. It is. Whereas with child support, it's the same standard or, or a similar standard for modification. But like you alluded to, there are at least guidelines there. There's at least some range where you can say, hey, look, my income changed from X to Y, so I'm entitled to that reduction. But I can tell you this, Rob, what I find is even with those guidelines in child support, the fight is sometimes about what's the actual income you're gonna use to calculate support. Right. And with the people nowadays with the entrepreneurial spirit and running their own business yeah. and making their finances look however they want, that's a whole different kettle of fish that people deal with when they're trying to establish child support. So guidelines, I think they would be helpful. I agree with you on this. It's not gonna solve But it it's though. not gonna solve every problem. You're just gonna have the same problem with determining income and especially if you're self-employed. Well, we got to do something to make it better. What's the what's your number one takeaway for somebody who might be watching this, who might be in a similar situation to you? What can you give my audience that would be, you know, positive to move forward with? Um, I don't know that I have found any positive wow. points going through that entire process. Wow. I mean, you know, even to think about possibly modifying one day. I mean, it's an overwhelming it take, thought. It didn't take two years to get my divorce finished mm -hmm. because we wanted to work it out amicably. One of us did. The other one held her guns and eventually got what she wanted. And, you know, to spend $50,000 to get the divorce, if I said, hey, I'd like to modify, you know, do you think she's going to just roll over and say no? It's going to be another big legal battle with another fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to maybe Maybe. Get Maybe a get little a bit of a reduction. So are you going to get married again? I have gotten married You again. have gotten married again, I so am. there's still an but, option for love. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's going to be the positive. Uh, I had I, to find a positive I, here. Well, and, and there is. I didn't think I would ever get married again, mm -hmm. but I have a wonderful wife. We're married a uh, little over six years now, and we're still on our honeymoon. I love that. So, so see, there is there is life after divorce. Thanks for watching Devil in Divorce. I'm Karen Turk. This is my co-host, Joe Costello. We're coming to you from the beautiful Riverside Hotel. Thank you so much, Robert, for Thank joining you for us. Thank you, Robert. Stay tuned.